They call it the COD, a carrier onboard delivery aircraft. From a base in Bahrain, we board a US Navy Greyhound for the journey out to the Eisenhower. When you see the air crew, wave our hands and holler, here we go, here we go, here we go. Make sure you put your feet flat on the floor. We're about to experience just what it's like to land on an aircraft carrier. And soon out in the Arabian Gulf, she appears. On the signal, we brace and seconds later hit the deck at 100 miles an hour, coming to an abrupt halt on this huge floating airfield. The carrier set sail from Norfolk, Virginia at the start of June and began launching airstrikes from the eastern Mediterranean at the end of that month. In late July, the ICA, she's called, arrived here in the Arabian Gulf at the head of a carrier strike group. In command is a former F-14 pilot and Top Gun instructor who still flies jets from the Eisenhower. We take a look at what effects that we've had, how we've contributed to supporting the Iraqi security force and also forces in Syria as they take part in the ground offensive. Uh, so we look at that, that information each day and up to this point, the airstrikes have been very successful in targeting key leadership, uh, key infrastructure that ISIL uses to draw upon for either their combat power or their financial backing. Launched in 1975, the Eisenhower is one of 10 nuclear-powered Nimitz-class carriers in the US Navy. With a crew of more than 5,000, she's 24 storeys tall with a deck the size of three football pitches. On board is a complete air wing of seven squadrons, 66 aircraft, including 53 F-18 Hornets and Super Hornets. Here in the Gulf, it's more than 50 degrees centigrade on deck as wave after wave of jets soar into the sky, many on missions to hit ISIS targets in Iraq and Syria. The Eisenhower has four steam-powered catapults. Each of them is capable of sending an F-18 down this 300-foot runway, taking it from zero to 170 miles an hour in just two seconds. Getting these jets airborne and into the fight are teams of specialists, from weapons handlers to aircraft movers, each role identified by a different coloured shirt. When you're, when you're out on the outside looking in and you actually see what's going on, it really does look like chaos. And if you're able to understand the actual flow of the deck, it's organised chaos. And with that, the amount of aircraft and the amount of personnel that, per, that can get just one aircraft off the deck is absolutely amazing. That aircraft is touched by at least 15 different people before it actually reaches its mission. And the teamwork between ship's company like myself, the squadron personnel, to crash and salvage, to everybody, and the catapult guys, it's, it's just an immense amount of teamwork. Since the start of Operation Inherent Resolve in August 2014, US Navy jets have flown nearly 8,500 sorties and launched more than 4,000 airstrikes. Controlling the flow of aircraft on and off the carrier is primary flight control 10 storeys up. It's run by a team of air bosses, all of them former US Navy aviators. A set an average cycle might be uh, 12 aircraft recovering, 12 aircraft launching. Their missions are varied. They'll be uh, supporting Operation Inherent Resolve. They'll be uh, providing uh, protective um, combat air patrols overhead the ship and also doing a little training as well and some, some tanking. Um, we, we cycle, we usually run about uh, eight or nine cycles a day and that can tally up to as many as 100, 125 sorties. Six different types of aircraft operate from the Eisenhower, from fast jets to helicopters. On deck, they park them in every available space, while down below, teams of engineers work around the clock, making sure as many as possible are operational. There's five squadrons of F-18s on board the Eisenhower, and these cavernous hangars are where they store some of those aircraft. There's three of them, and the conditions down here are really hot and oppressive. Now, hundreds of people work down here during the day, conducting maintenance, everything from minor repairs to complete engine rebuilds. Uh, we have uh, avionics, airframes, um, we have uh, structural mechanics, we have pretty much our plane captains too that are down here. Um, we work on all the aircraft systems, um, from electronics all the way to extra, uh, the structural material on the aircraft. Uh, we do our, our turns down here, and we do all our major inspections down here as well. 
24-7, non-stop, we are here. High tempo all the time. The Ike is essentially a floating town. On board, there's several gyms, three hairdressing salons, even a supermarket. And this being a piece of America, they even have a branch of this well-known coffee chain. We sell a lot of coffee. We sell about probably 2,500 cups a day. So that's half the ship pretty much. And we, we make a lot of money. So, I mean, you'll see some people come here six times a day, the same person. So, I don't know, maybe it's a little bit of happiness. They just love to come here, I don't know. What the Eisenhower is also guzzling is jet fuel. With so many aircraft flying so many missions, they need regular replenishment. These Nimitz-class carriers can store more than three million gallons. And today, a US Navy tanker, the John Ericsson, has pulled alongside to top up the tanks. For the crew of this huge warship, this mission means seven months away at sea. On average, the Eisenhower's jets are flying 18 combat sorties per day over Iraq and Syria. To date, the US has launched around 11,000 airstrikes, three times as many as the rest of the coalition combined. Soon, the US Navy takes delivery of an even bigger carrier, the Ford class, the steam-powered catapult replaced with a powerful electromagnet. For now, though, this remains among the world's most potent warships and one that's waging a relentless war on ISIS. Simon Newton, Forces News, aboard the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower.